Hi there, I'm Charlie, your online business manager and WordPress expert. My goal is to assist small to medium business owners build their businesses with a focus on using the internet and online technologies in an appropriate and cost-effective manner. People hire me to take the stress out of managing their businesses and allow themselves to focus on what they do best. I'd like to introduce you today to Jane Cavell. 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 No, we got it right. I did ask before we even did this. An author, writer, and speaker. Jan is an entrepreneur who has run micro businesses in a wide range of sectors to much larger businesses. And today she's going to share some of the wisdom she's gathered in doing all of this. Hi, Jan. Charlie, hi. Thank you so much for inviting me on your show. Ah, oh, look, I'm, I'm really, really pleased that you said yes, and I'm really looking forward to this uh, good discussion. We're just going to have a bit of a chat here. But what I'd really like you to do is give me an idea of who you are or give my listeners an idea of who you are. Absolutely. Well, I am Jan Cavell. I'm from the UK. And as you rightly said, I had a lot of micro businesses and I had uh, one which I grew more substantially to about 50 people and a couple of factories in size. And that taught me a lot of lessons, good and bad, um, over a long period of time. And I also had a side gig writing. And so when I came to retire, I thought, I, you know, I miss writing so much. I want to fulfill a lifetime ambition and write a book, which I did. Um, I've now written two. And I write about something I'm very passionate about, which is, is this foundations for growth. Because I think so many entrepreneurs, myself included, um, sort of launch into businesses and startups without a full idea of where they're going if you like. And so they don't pay that much attention to the foundations um, because they think it might not apply to them later on. And then if it does uh, and they do grow, it makes life so much harder, you know. And if we can just understand a little bit of the basics of good business foundations, um, as well as getting somebody like yourself to take care of the bits that you don't love doing, then you're onto a very good wicket for wanting to grow your business. You know, I'm sitting here nodding emphatically. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you actually said was you, they don't think it will apply to them. Um, I also think that some of the reticence is they don't oh. – it's so not that they don't want to take the time to do it. It's that they're running too bit too fast yeah. to do it. And before they know it, it's too late. It, it exactly. makes it so much harder. So let's talk about those foundations and what, what sort of foundations you're talking about there. Well, I think, you know, it starts almost from day one from conception because you actually want to set up a balance sheet, right? If there's any chance of you growing, you, you really do need to um, get that right and get some expert advice, which, of course, most of us don't. We set up a self-employed or whatever. Um, but but let's, let's leap over that one, um, though it's a point worth making. But the main foundations I am talking about, uh, okay, I think one is uh, strategy because we tend to sort of muddle on through a bit um, you know, as you say, we're firefighting, we're growing, we're learning, we're doing all these things. And really what we need to do is just stand back and have a really good plan. Because growth, particularly bigger growth, takes resources in the form of people, in the form of money, in the form of premises sometimes, um, all these things. And those are a bit chicken and egg. You know, if you don't have the money in place when you come to grow, it's going to be however perfect everything else is, it's going to be can't go there, can't do it. If you don't have a people in place, you're going to burn out really fast trying to do it all yourself or with too small a team. You know, so it's all chicken and egg. And if you've got a really good strategic plan, you can save yourself so much grief. You know, so I think that's yeah. the very first highlight, I would say, is so important. Have that clear plan. 
now when you're talking about a strategic plan, I mean, some people think, oh, the 50-page document, the details no. all. No, <laughs> I hate those things, but absolutely antediluvial. Uh, you know, I'm talking about a, a vision. I think a vision is really important of why you're doing what you're doing and where you want to get to overall. But, I mean, that's almost a headliner. But um, I think what we're talking about is brief summaries of where you want to be in five years, two years, one year, six months. And then particularly with the earlier ones, you can break that down into what that looks like in terms of those resources and what you're going to need. You know, with senior people, for example, you can get a bot off the street to help with packing or something, hopefully, in a, you know, in a month or so, easy. But, you know, if you're looking for a co-founder or senior management team or something, you know, that's going to take probably nine months to a year to get and embed and everything else. You know, so so things take different lengths of time. So, so you can, you know, keep things fairly brief in your way of your strategic plan, but you want to be clear of, of when and work backwards. I, I, I actually find sometimes just even a one pager. To start Absolutely, with. all for one pages, and a one page you can put on the wall that everybody can see, so that everybody's on board. It's even better. I love those. Yep, and then as you come down to the next one, you say, okay, so we're sitting at six months now. We're looking for our year and our eighteen month plan. Mm. Maybe take that out and break that one out into your next Absolutely. one pager. And, and you don't have to do it. You. You've got a team. Your marketing people or person can can break up the marketing bit down. You know, because they'll be aware of where they've got to get to. Let them loose for other specialists. You know, get out and feel people's way. Absolutely, I really, I really, really love that comment. Actually, your to me, your position as the business owner, as the as the person who started the business, is to say, "Here's where I want to be. I want to be delivering these sorts of services at these sorts of rates." This is what exactly. I want in terms of revenue. How do I get there? And let uh, someone else do that for you. Your marketing person loves doing that. <laughs> Absolutely adores doing it. That's what that's what they live for. Um, and now you also mentioned the vision, and I just wanted to touch back on that. You, you said it's a headliner, and I do agree. Absolutely a headliner. But it is kind of key. And the reason I think it's key, and I'd love your opinion on it, is because when it gets tough and when all you're doing is working, is you can look at that and say, this is why I'm doing this. Yeah, it's essential. I couldn't agree with you more, Charlie. You know, if you don't have that passion for why you're doing what you're doing, and that can be anything from feeding your kids to changing the world. But, you know, for real reason, you're doing it. You are so right, you will give up. Yep. And honestly, there are days that you go, I don't know why I'm doing it. Then you look up and you think, yep, got it. And you get out of bed. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) One foot in front of the other. Yeah. All right. It's worth it. so, I mean, we're not going to worry about all the accounting stuff and all that mundane stuff that you've got to have done. And I am going to recommend that people go and get their accountants and talk to their accountants when they're setting yeah. their businesses up. We've got our strategic plan. Um, what next? What What are the well, other Well, I think it's got to be people, you know, because depending on what size you're growing to, you know, you're going to need good people on either side of you. You will not be able to do it all yourself, you know, when it gets to a certain size. Um, You know, it it depends what size you want to go to. You may be looking at subcontracting, you know, bits and pieces and getting to that size, or you may be looking to have, you know, a, a business with huge premises and 500 people working for you. But particularly if you've got a huge growth of employed people, you are going to need, at the very least, if you haven't got a co-founder, a really good right hand and left hand who, you know, are going to care about that business virtually as much as you do, know that business virtually as well as you do. And of course, that is probably going to mean you have to give some equity in the business, but it is going to be a lot completely game changer 
because as opposed to everything being on your shoulders, there's going to be a team of you driving that business. They're going to bring that outside knowledge in that you haven't got, probably. You know, you, you tend to, I mean, avoid doing that old one of hiring people that feel very familiar that talk the same language because, of course, all you'll get is three of you in a line all with the same skill sets. But, um, you know, you want three differing wise monkeys, please, um, you know, with uh, contrasting skills, contrasting strengths and contrasting experience. And then you've got a really, really globally winning team. So I think it's... You said something really valuable there, and that was the three different people. Mm. You don't want to be hiring people like yourself. I know. Um, so easy to do. I, I, I heard, I can't remember which which of the people I read um, said it, but you really want to employ and work with people who challenge you. Definitely. It's, it's, it's really important, you know, because that brings me to, a, to another point, which I'm, I'm obsessed about, which is personal growth, you know, because how can you possibly expect your business to grow unless you do? Mm. But, you know, just putting that to one side for a moment, you know, one of the best ways to grow is it's people who challenge you and surrounding yourself by other talent. And you can bring them on and they can bring you on. And, you know, as you say, they challenge you because they've got different viewpoints, um, different experience. And that's a strength. You get the best arguments laid out. And I don't mean screaming arguments. I mean, good, good, different points of view arguments, um, you know, laid out to, to achieve the very best outcomes. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned personal development in all of that as well. Yeah, I'm obsessed with this. You know, I think it's so easy for business owners, and I think particularly for women, actually, because we tend to be nurturing people. We tend to want to look after our team, which is great. But we also fall into the trap of putting ourselves last, you know, always picking up the slack, always doing the extra work, staying late at night to do the extra bits, you know, oh, no, you go off home, I'll go, I've got this, don't worry, you worry. You know, so we are the most prone to getting burnt out and most time short. And that means, of course, when we look and think, you know, there's a really good networking session or a really interesting thing on YouTube or whatever in the way of personal development, we think, oh, God, I really wanted to see that, but I haven't got time. And so we never spend the time on us. And we forget that we are the businesses at that stage, hopefully not later on. But at that stage, we are still the business's greatest asset. And we need looking after and we need developing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm going to just sort of then bring that all together is that that's where your vision comes in. That's where your strategic plan comes in, because you can eke out that time for yourself by saying, well, I've got this person to do this. And I know that I don't have to do this piece, piece exactly. sorry, package of work, because that's what so is going to do. And that's, that's the five minutes you can take to go and watch that webinar or sitting in on the training yeah. course or whatever it is. Absolutely. And, you know, it's important to find the right places for you to develop. I think it's very easy for us to, you know, say, oh, I've got to do that. And, what, you know, perhaps your business coach told you to spend an hour to vote on self-development every week. So you sign up for something and sit there with bored out of your skull with everything going around in your head thinking I should be doing this and I should be doing that and what if they say I'm not really interested. But, you know, so you've got to find... The type of everybody learns differently. Um, everybody responds to, to teaching and networking differently. It's really important you find something that resonates with you. But <coughs> sorry, I've just done my back, so I cannot cough like that. Whoops. Um, <clears throat> I just saw back. Um, but so that um, you know, you actually. Sorry. Mm, you're fine. Breathe. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, um, the, the right sort of the right group, you know, again, if a group's not stimulating you, you may have gone past that level. You know, we have to refine the groups we socialize with as we grow, well, you know, all those things. It's, you know, don't just do it 
because it's the right thing to do, do it because it's having a mammoth effect on your life. Absolutely. That, that's really great advice. Now, you made the comment about you may not always be the most valuable asset in your business. I did. I did. You know, if you're creating a business that's going to be of value, that's going to stand you well in your old age or that you're going to sell in five years' time or whatever your dream is, you have got to get yourself out of the center of that business. When we start up, you know, there's this sort of business hub that revolves around you like a crazy whirlwind. And you've got to move yourself out of that center so that you're working on business development on the outside, but uh, actually it runs itself on the inside every single day. And that's the real key to developing a business is separating you and it. Um, and and that takes that's one of the things that takes personal growth because you've got to actually extract yourself and let go. Ah, oh, scary stuff. Well, it's really, really scary stuff. And um, it, I was just thinking as you were saying that, it's like, well, you've got a business. Did you buy yourself a job or do, are you growing a business? And the difference to that is, do you have to work on it or in it every day? Yeah, Does everything absolutely. revolve around you and is it going to fall apart if you're not there? Well, you've bought yourself a job, unfortunately. Um, but if you're building a business, you can step out. You can let your team do it. Hell, go and sit on the beach for half a day or exactly. go for a bike ride or something. Absolutely. Um, the, the, the benefit you will bring to your business at that point, I think, is your vision. Yeah. This is the vision I had for this business. Here's the things we can do. Or, you know, like I've got some, some of the people that I've been interviewing, they're speakers, they're um, trainers. They're not working in their business every day. They're off delivering training courses. Exactly. And they're doing them all around the world. And in doing that, they can actually take time off to while they're traveling to go yeah. and visit some of these places. It's not fly in and fly out because they've got to keep going because something else needs their attention. Exactly. No, you should not be the person to go to for an everyday crisis anymore, you know, and and for many people, that's a pretty amazing thought, you know, it's not, it's okay to be that person for a while, but after a few years, it gets very, very tiring, and that's, of course, where people end up burned out anyway, you know, so it's important that you're not that person, but but as you say, you know, it releases you to do other things, and that may be other things that you want to do, or it may be things for actually develop your business. You might be making plans for mergers and acquisitions, or all sorts of exotic stuff. Um, but you can't do it while you're, you know, dealing with, you know, Pete didn't turn up for work today. You know, you might be starting another business or another arm to the business and, and being the center of that business for a little bit until exactly. that thing grows up yeah. as well. And that's definitely. a valid way of doing it. Definitely, definitely. It's all about, you know, creating this thing that runs separately and is constantly increasing in value. So um, I guess that then comes down to, and I, I, you know, if, you, if there's something that you'd rather talk about, um, what I'm hearing here is that you actually need not only your vision and your strategy, but you need your processes and your procedures in place. Absolutely. Systemization, you know, and uh, it, it's incredibly boring. I loathe systems. And when I talk to other entrepreneurs, uh, you know, they all go systems. You know, most people with that sort of wacky mind, entrepreneurial mind of, of, of thinking up ideas and you know stuff do not like the small print you know they're big picture people and yeah I understand that and um, you know like I say it certainly applies to me too there's a great book actually by by an Australian called Dave Jennings I don't know if you come across it but it's called Systemology and that's a, got a very good approach to systems whereby it minimizes the work for entrepreneurs to do on uh, systems, um, it, but puts them in place. But, um, you know, whatever systems you choose to use, for more systemization without crushing creativity, that's the thing. You get too much. You've got to do it when I say it. Um, and you've got a dead company with no energy whatsoever. You know, it's it's systems, but allowing people the freedom to to reach their own personal goals and the, put have their own input into things. 
Yeah, I am a systems person, strangely oh, yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually I mean, I really I, I I like I like helping people develop their systems. Brilliant. Um, yeah. And this comes down to, as you said before, put the right people in place around you. Um, I hate doing admin work. I've got admin people. Oh, I love it. Yeah, no, I mean, the perfect teamwork and that's, you know, to play through to all the strengths again, isn't it, you know? Yeah, and I just just flick that off to them. I'm like, hey, this needs filing. Put it away for me. I'm done playing now. (laughs) No, no, you can have a system, so I'll have the admin any day, Charlie. There you go, see? Um, yeah. And, yeah, that, that's why you need to have your pe- people and your teams around you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it's interesting, you, you know, it's a bit like um, sort of hybrid and remote working, which, of course, Australia is much, much better at, um, I think, and the rest of the world had to catch up a bit with COVID. And I remember one entrepreneur friend saying, you know, that he, he'd set, it, set up his company to do it way before COVID, and one of the reasons was because the person he wanted to do all the organization for the company said they weren't done well moving, you know. So it was either do remote or, you know, she'd love to join. Find but, someone else. Um, yeah, you know. And But equally, she was going to be the person who was responsible for systems. So it was, you know, a great agreement that, yeah, she could come on board as she made it work. And, you know, they've got this very, very successful business now. But it runs completely remotely, um, you know, and I think that's that's terribly important to get that person in who loves systems and is as committed to the business. And then you don't have to if you're an entrepreneur that hates it. Yeah, and, you know, it's okay to hate it. And I, I, worked, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and yeah. I, I sometimes sit there with my head in my hands going, God, God, guys, we've got to follow the system here to get this done. Oh, we yeah. just want a short circuit. I tell you what, you hand that off to that person and you go do your next thing and we'll make sure that this all gets done. Exactly. <laughs> because if, if you don't, things stop working. They do. They do. You can only firefight so long. Um, you yeah. Know, um, systems stop firefighting <laughs> they absolutely do and i you know we, I, we're talking here about entrepreneurs i think that's probably one of the most difficult things i've noticed them doing um and i, I know i'm an entrepreneur too it's it's taking yourself out of that um yeah. just trusting to the system and letting letting the oh, system do so what it will do yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, you're completely right. It is one of the hardest things, I think, um, you know, and and I know that from, from my own experience, you know, I was hugely suspicious of it. So the moment there was a hiccup, it was, oh, well, you know, we can't do this. We can't do that, you know. <laughs> and, you know, you're almost looking for a get out as to why it wouldn't work. Um, and I've watched that with other people too. Um, but, yeah. you know, it is the only way in the end. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's a really valid point is just understand that nothing is going to be perfect. Problems are going to occur. Issues will happen. Mm. Um, Deal with it. Just, okay, where where did it break down? How do you fix it? How can you improve it? How do you avoid that next time? Move on. Absolutely right. So um, what, what else would you recommend for people? What have we done? We've done we've done the strategy, we've done the people, we've done the systems, personal systems. development. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, we sort of probably, the, I should have started with this at number one, inevitably. Um, but, um, well, no, I mentioned balance sheet, that probably comes first. But, um, yeah, it's sort of, you know, I think there's a big change in marketing and the approach to marketing goes on um between sort of startup and and flat out going for it growth because when you start up you are just grabbing sales you know um it doesn't matter what they are it doesn't matter if your business has ever done it before but you're still so excited to sell something that you take it and you know can you alter what you do for a client yes of course you can wow it means a sale can you you know paint it red or you know it doesn't matter with anything for a sale whereas marketing um comes into its own with growth and you've got to hit that gold mine line of uh 
the real theme of demand where your customers have got uh, what another entrepreneur and I calls a hair on fire problem, a really urgent, must be met problem. But there's plenty of demand for whether it's being done already and you're doing it in a better way or whether it genuinely is something new, which is incredibly rare. But either way, you've got to find that demand that's going to keep on going and that product or service that you can streamline and repeat rather than alter it for every single client. Actually, the one that delivers all the time, again, that you can systemize that's going to bring you the money while you sleep and that takes much more marketing to, to really refine that product um, than it does at startup. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that also comes back to knowing who your target market is and your target audience absolutely. is. I mean, you absolutely. mentioned the hell on, I love that, the hell was a hell on fire problem. Yeah, yeah. hell on fire yeah, problem. That, I think it's great. You know, he, he talks about how, you know, you've got two customers. One of them may have an itchy leg and one of them may have the hair on fire, you know, and you want the hair on fire customer, uh, you know, because they're going to buy, come what may, the itchy client may decide to go on itching their leg. Yeah, yeah. And knowing knowing where to find that client, knowing who that client is, knowing what Absolutely. it is that drives them a lot, um, motivates them and that's where that is where your marketing comes in and that, that takes time it does um, it does take time you know i mean the more research you can do in advance obviously the better but but for true growth it does take time you know and it's difficult i think for some some people like me who are very sales orientated um you know because it's difficult to damp us down because we want to go on selling and sell to sell for anything to anybody, you know, whereas at a certain point, marketing does have a value and you need to haul back and actually do the right things and do what you're good at and not drown your people with, oh, well, I've just, you know, find that somebody wants a trip to Timbuktu. I know we sell nuts and bolts, but can't we organize a travel company as well? You know, it's, it's just <laughs> a, a sale is not always a good thing. I am so glad to hear you say that because, um, yeah, that, that's actually one of the things that I've said to a few of my the people that I work with is that's not your target audience. Don't waste your breath. Don't yeah. waste your energy. Oh, but I don't have any money coming in. They're prepared to pay me. Yeah, but if you take that job, you're not going to have the bandwidth to do the next job that comes along that is your target audience. Sometimes I think it's that's better. right, but I think it does come with growth. I think, you know, in the start, you are so desperate for some cash flow, but, you know, you have to take the crazy, completely off-centre work as well. But, yep. but for growth, Agreed. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Agreed, absolutely. Well, look, that's fascinating, Jan. Now, um, how can people find out more about you and how can you help them in general? Absolutely. Well, um, I have a website, which is jancavell.co.uk, so it's pretty easy to find. And I'm on I will have all, all of this sort of in the sh- I will put all of this in the show notes, Charlie. of course. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, you know, you can read my books by all means. I've got the new one, which is sort of behind my ear here, which is just out a couple of months ago, which is called Start for Success, which is available in Australia and anywhere else where your listeners might want to be. Um, so hopefully that will will help them. And obviously, if they've got any questions, I'm always on on top and happy to answer them. Though it sounds that you'd be much better to field all the system ones and the IT ones, please, rather than me. <laughs> I'll do the, I'll do the IT and systems. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. There's always that piece of gold that comes from the different perspective, which is always. Absolutely. Yeah. And why I wanted to get people on to this show to, to have a chat with me. Um, now, are you still doing speaking? I am still doing speaking, actually. It was nice to be out on the um, sort of person-to-person speaking circuit again, you know, which we're just getting to over here. Um, you know, so it's it's lovely to actually relate to people face to face and uh, again. So I do that, but obviously I do more podcasting because of worldwide audiences and um, 
you know, there's still, still a lot of that going on post-COVID. You know, it's relevant to people and it's it's time-saving for people. So I like to do both. Fantastic. So there you go. So Jan's a speaker and author and yeah. uh, someone who actually has some real-life experience in growing businesses from tiny businesses and making them big as well. I do. I now, do. I, I actually... I. There, there was something that I read. I think, yes, I did read it. Um, you said you'd made one big mistake with one of your businesses, and that was <laughs> not I? getting out <laughs> soon enough. Oh, yeah, that particular mistake. <laughs> I was going to say I've made most of them in my time. <laughs> um, but, yes, um, not getting out soon enough. I think that that's very true. I, I think there is a, probably a time limit on a business, particularly a, an, it's sort of very entrepreneurial one. I think if you're running um, a sort of, I don't mean it rudely, a tick over local business, I think they're great. And I think well, economies need them and they may be right for you. And I'm a huge fan of them. I've had those in my time as well and they're fantastic. But if you're growing, you've got a growing entrepreneurial business, I think, Unless you grow and really add to your team so they can take so much weight, which I never quite succeeded in doing, that does become a time limit. Um, and you cease to grow however hard you try, or at least the business is not suited to the sort of growing you're doing or, or all sorts of things. So I think it's it's like any relationship. It's possible to need, you know, need to change things up and for me personally I would have been better to be more daring and part with that one earlier but it seemed scary at the time but, and well and you sometimes you become personally invested in it and it becomes oh, yeah, very absolutely. difficult absolutely. so I think yeah I just wanted to highlight that one um, as something that people should also think about when they're when they're creating their businesses is have a use by date um, by all Definitely. means review buys Absolutely. that use by date yeah but um, you know that's another great thing if you've taken yourself out of business then the business is sellable if it hits you in the eye at any given time but you know actually i've had enough i want out you know then you've got a sellable business if you haven't developed that into a sellable business then you haven't got that option and i think that's really key yep and that's that's actually part of the tragedy of it because you can't sell it because you can't sell your right yourself yeah, i know Fantastic. Well, look, Jan, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I do appreciate it. I will have I all of your contact details in the uh, show notes below. Thank and you. please remember, guys, to like this video, subscribe to my channel, visit Jan's channels and subscribe to hers as well. And don't forget to ring the notification bells so that you get told when we drop more content. Have a great week, guys. Thank you.